Hello, welcome to Latin Roundtable number one. Please remember to remain on mute unless you are called on and introduce yourself and outlet before you ask your first question. Please no follow-up questions. Osvaldo, you have the first question. Hi, Zoe, how are you? Hi. Zoe, um, my first question is... Um, oh, why sorry, is Osvaldo, do you mind just saying your name oh. and outlet before the first question? Yeah, hey, I'm sorry. sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, Osvaldo. Uh, I know that Zoe can speak Spanish. Can we do this in Spanish? Unfortunately, this was not approved for Spanish beforehand, oh. so we have to go with English. Thank you. Oh, okay, no problem. No problem. Uh, Zoe, uh, I'm Osvaldo. I'm from Radio Cooperativa from Chile. Uh, and my first question is, uh, why is it important to tell a story like this with a strong girl uh, that doesn't want to be attached to the classical structure, that doesn't want to be a princess, uh, she wants to fight. Why is it important to tell those stories to our kids? Um, I think that it, on, on so many levels, the level of representation is primordial for, for an individual's development. You know, I, I'm, I'm a mother of three boys and I can see, and my twins are just, just a little under seven and my little one is a little under five. And already the conversation around identity, who am I, where am I, why am I, is, um, it is important and it's, it's, it's evergreen. It's what they constantly try to find on a daily basis, right? How, the, how do they fit in in this world? When mama looks this way and papa looks this way and papa has an accent and mama speaks all these languages, but I'm in America, but when I turn on Netflix, when I turn on this, do I see me? Do I hear me? And, um, and I, I am appreciative that platforms like Netflix um, with all of their leaders and executives, they're tapping into that reality of, of just like an actual, a very accurate depiction, not just of our present day life and of our people. Uh, when I say people, I mean everybody, human beings, but also of collective histories that, that compose America. And and um and so that's that that is is uh, is you know the reason why it's it's just so important to get to see these reflections because it's also um, we Latinx stories or inspired stories um, are necessary because we are the fastest growing minority group in the states. Not to besides what we're doing in our respective countries in Latin America, like. We are a, a fast growing uh, community and we're also active participants in the US economy. Uh, we're over indexing on college enrollment, purchasing of homes, starting our own businesses. Uh, Latin uh, X females are, are basically not just, you know, consuming for their households, but because we take care of our elders, we're known as a culture that takes care of their own. Um, their, their buying power is twice as strong. So for our stories and entertainment to, to represent who we are as a community, not just martyrs or, or um, you know, or mischaracters, uh, I, I, I think it's never, it's just important. I hope that makes Ashton, sense. you have the next question. And please just a reminder to introduce um, your name and outlet before the first question. Thank you. Hey, so, uh, so I'm Sebastian. Sebastian uh, from uh, Red Gold in Chile. Um, I wanted to ask you in particular about uh, your uh, Latin and Caribbean roots. So um, how important for you is to connect uh, to that side of the family to create a work like uh, Maya and the Three? Um, I, I, I've always, it's, it's funny because I was never really always told every day, era Latina, era Latina, era Latina. But we lived it every day, the way that I ate, the way that I loved, my approach to life, the way that I connect with people, the music I listen to, um, what I dance. It's just, you know, and I, 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 was, I was raised uh, uh, as a Latina, you know, and, um, and now that I'm a mother, um, I, I know no other way to be. So I, I really, what was your question again? Because I, I know, I, oh, oh yes, I, I just, I'm very proud. I'm, I'm just very proud of my, of my heritage. And I never come from 
a place of like social justice to share my heritage. I always come from a place of passion and love because I'm very happy with who I am. <laughs> um, but I do see that there's a there's an imbalance in in the fact that so many of my American colleagues and friends and neighbors and families um, don't know anything about my history. So I, I I love to share. I love to share about my history. I don't I don't come with any other attitude but love and excitement. And I think that that is one thing that that we have to do as a collective community, Latinos, Latinx, is is to remind ourselves that what what makes us super proud is I feel like that energy is is exactly how we have to you know, uh, guide ourselves and guide others about who we are, um, because that's how you also get get everybody to listen, you know. Thank you. Well, you have the next question. Hi, Soy. I'm Paulo from La Tercera. Uh, what's the hardest thing to about playing a teenager? About about playing a what a Canadian? A teenager. Oh, a teenager. Um, <laughs> the fact that I haven't been a teenager for 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> um, but can I tell you something? Collaborating with Jorge Gutierrez, like if I don't know if you guys have had just the honor and 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 just like the gift of of being in the room with him for longer than five minutes. He is kindness, he is excitement, he is passion, but he has such a jovial um like essence to his character so when you're around him you're kind of ageless as well and um so being in a room with him for three hours in a row four to five hours sometimes doing the role of maya um i forget i do forget that i'm in my 40s <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't hard as long as you're being directed by someone like jorge gutierrez <laughs> so you have the next question uh, but but so it, it was special for you to play Maya, considering that you, in the original language of the of the show, you talk in Spanish, but you also talk in English in a mixed way. Uh, yes. Well, I mean, but that's kind of who we are, right? Like, even even when you go to Latin America, I remember I, I I grew up partially in the Caribbean, so I'm just as Latina as I am I'm, I'm North Americana, and and the Spanglish is not just a U.S. thing anymore. Like you go to Latin America, and everybody's talking Spanglish because I feel like the the, the U.S. influence of of entertainment and brands and everything have infiltrated our DNA in such a way all, all around the Americas that the Spanglish thing is, is like a universal thing, you know what I mean? And um, so I think it, it only made sense for, for us to, to just honor, you know, honor the way that we pronounce originally our our names and and our regions uh <laughs> and and certain things that are very important to pronounce them in their original accent in their original form and obviously that becomes a very modern day spanglish malay you know <laughs> with about one minute left sebastian you have the last question okay so i wanted to ask you about the themes and topics of my and the three you spoke about death, you spoke about love uh, and different things uh, throughout the, the series. So uh, which was the most difficult uh, theme or, or topic to, um, to deal with when you're working with the voices? Um, I would say too, for me, like I, loss is, is always gonna be a sensitive topic for me because I, I think it's such a universal thing. And we don't, um, I think that we do talk enough, especially for younger audiences, we do talk a lot about grief, you know, grief. Um, but we do, we have to always continuously make it okay for adults primarily to, to feel comfortable talking about death, you know, uh, especially if you're a parent. Um, I do believe that this is a, a, an all family sort of show because um, it's not just about magic and adventure and Mesoamerica, uh, uh, sort of like um, history, but it's it's also you know an opportunity for families to to remain open after each episode and talk about all the all the 
you know, the peaks and valleys of emotional journey of, that, that this story makes us go through, you know, emotionally. Um, so that's one. And then the other one is, is just, it's, it's just that the, the, the inequalities that really exist, cultural inequalities um, that exist, uh, uh, not cultural inequalities, just gender inequality that exists in cultures that are thousands of years old. I think it's important that we also as a Latinx community, when we're all coming together, once we erase all of our borders, that we, we really start addressing how we view women um, and, and the roles that we believe that women are meant to, to fulfill in life and whether or not we are giving our young girls the opportunity to, to stretch themselves and feel that they can accomplish anything in life. Because we, we're still, I, I do believe that as a, as a Latina, you know, that is a subject that is, that is a very big problem in our, in our community. Whether we are immigrants or we are still living in our mother countries, the way that we view women is different. Thank that you. is all the time that we have for this roundtable interview. Thank you all for coming. Please say your goodbyes and exit the Zoom room. Thank you. Ciao, Chile. Ciao. <laughs> 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 Yeah. <laughs>